This is a Raspberry Pi that I built into an Osborne One case. Uh, it's running a CPM emulator to give that very authentic feel. And I hooked up the keyboard using an Arduino. A while back I got a Osborne and it didn't work so I bought another one. Which then left me with this bunch of parts left over and I was like well what am I going to do? And I thought well there's only one thing you can do and that's try and replicate it. And replicating the hardware is pretty easy. The software as well turned out to be quite easy. A quick Google search found CPM emulator, which compiled nicely on the Raspberry Pi, and then pretty much runs any type of CPM software. It's a bit difficult to say because I haven't tried all of it, and I don't know if you could, and because there were so many different CPM systems back in the day, they... Uh, don't all work exactly the same, but in the main part, it runs fine. So after compiling the software and, and giving it a quick test, uh, next thing was sort to make it run automatically and try and give the computer a bit of a, that authentic feel. If you boot up the old Osborne one, you'd get the screen and it away, and it load up straight to the command prompt, and that's what I wanted uh, this to do. So it's about changing the config on the Pi to boot to the command prompt, getting it to auto login, also then changing the Also then uh, adding the command to the bash file so that it loads when you log into the system. Well, when the user logs in, so anyone who logs, it, logs in as Raspberry Pi will get to boot straight to CPM. You can always exit CPM and, and load straight into uh, the desktop or the Linux command prompt. Also, the screen that I was going to use, or I am using, is a 5-inch WaveShare LCD, which needs a custom mode installing in the boot config. So if you're not familiar with the boot config, it's the thing that holds the config for the boot of the Raspberry Pi. And then I just set certain options, uh, such as the display mode, uh, if you want to force it to HDMI, you could force it to use a different audio. It also enables you to change the overscan settings, which I had to do to make it fit because fit the screen. Because of course the old screen is 4.3. This is a five-inch wide screen, so I had to get it down. So yeah, basically. Uh, I had to set it to mode 87, which is a custom display mode, and then you can set the resolution to whatever you feel it needs to be, or in this case, what you're told to do, which is 800 by 400 at 60 hertz. And then it boots up into... So this is the inside of the device after I'd glued everything to the inside. We've got the Raspberry Pi there at the wave share screen and then it just comes with the HDMI connector, plugs into the head pinners. The Arduino uh, keyboard connector, which I'll come to in a minute, and an extra USB cable uh, so that I could plug in a mouse at the front. The Arduino, you see, enables me to use the old keyboard to uh, as a as a just a normal USB keyboard as a head device. Uh, 
So I 3D printed some blanking plates as well just to make the front look a bit better. So the key, the original keyboard, as with many keyboards, is just a row and column keyboard. I think all keyboards are row and column. I'm not entirely sure, but uh, most of them are anyway. Uh, so that means that when you press a key, it connects a circuit based upon the row and the column that you're on. So all I had to do was work out which pin goes to which row and which pin goes to which column then program that into the software of the Arduino to say if you press A and it's on column 1, row 2, you get an A or you get a B. All very simple. So once working all the pinouts out on the keyboard, it's just a case of hooking it up to the Raspberry Pi and making myself uh, a connector using some pin headers and a bit of perf board. What is odd is the keyboard on the Raspberry Pi, the keyboard, sorry, on the Osborne One has got 24 pins, but only 20 are connected, the connector. And now the keyboard actually works as a USB keyboard plugged into any device. So you can also run uh, the full Raspberry Pi desktop on it. Uh, so in essence, it becomes a fully functional computer. In essence, the screen is really too small to use it. I feel as a computer, and if you ever had, if you're ever using the original ones back in the eighties, what would you have done with that tiny screen? Now, while they did have an output that was an add-on, and the earlier devices didn't, so you were you had got a five-inch screen, and the big thing behind this was they said it was a portable machine. Well, it was portable. It's eleven kilos, which I wouldn't class as portable. It was advertised as being able to fit under an aircraft seat. But who knows? The original as well had 64k of RAM. This, of course, has a bit more uh, as it has 4 gig of RAM. So then I just uh, set it up a boot test against the old Osborne Pi, the original at the bottom and the newer one at the top. And they turn both for on. Load time you see on both of them is about the same to actually get to the, the command prompt, which is pretty interesting. Uh, it's when you try and load a program, and in this case I'm loading Zork. I'm do it on the bottom one first uh, and do it on the top one and it's instant and we're still waiting on the original uh, Osborne one at the bottom yeah but now I can obviously play Zork on my new uh, machine rather than having to rely on the 80s components that keep breaking so I hope you like the video uh, as always, subscribe for more.